pretty mature, but we could have like taken them to the next level for the age group that we were working with. Absolutely. So, so it, that's the type of thing that you should be able to get out of get out of this uh, audience analysis. So take that. Uh, consider that. So moving on. Um, yourself that question. What does the audience need to hear from you? Uh, and uh, you know, why, why are, are you standing up here? Or why am I standing up here? What, what is it going to take to keep the, uh, keep the audience engaged? So, and always remember what we learned in class. What is it? What's in it for me? I love that baby. <laughs> Uh, we're not done. We're not ready yet. We're not ready for that yet. Okay. Not yet. Not yet. We got a couple more slides. Uh, okay. Research. Somebody mentioned being knowledgeable. What we were just talking about being knowledgeable uh, allows you to speak a little bit more confidently. Actually, a lot more confidently. Um, more diligent research is going to give you the edge to be able to answer questions, uh, to respond, and, uh, and do things that somebody who hasn't done the research won't. Uh, always research different points of view. Uh, it's always good to get a different angle, different perspective. Um, this one, review your supporting material. Uh, this one really hits home because I would say half of us have done, and actually probably every single one of us have done against the rules when it comes to this. If you, uh, if you notice, uh, how, how do I, how do I bore my audience, or how to bore my audience, is through ex overusing things like PowerPoints, uh, Prezi. So in this age of, age of technology, we all, we all like to use it. It's, 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 a great, uh, it's a great addition to our, uh, to help us de demonstrate ideas. But for pitiful PowerPoint, it's abused more often than not. Visual aids are just that, they're aids. They shouldn't be telling your story for you. You're supposed to be telling the story. If you've noticed, I haven't been a whole lot of, uh, a whole lot of words on, on our screen. And that, that's intentional because you should be focusing up on the speaker, not the PowerPoint. Um, slides should be memory joggers for the audience to trigger them to think. Um, but and another another big thing is don't read slides to your audience. Um, so. And I just had a suggestion here. Try next time to put a picture instead of instead of bullets and talk about the picture. Um, it's they say a picture's worth a thousand words. I think it's worth ten thousand. And I think you can put in more information in one picture than you can in fifty pages of bullets. So rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. The final three steps should be taken seriously. Each step bring, brings you closer to the final presentation. Rehearse words, slide presentations, uh, and audience interaction. Um, rehearse in front of a mirror, in front of families, friends, or anybody who's going to give you that honest critique. And then you guys, if you want to pass out, we have a nice little activity. What you need? I want everybody to get in groups of two. What's wearing? In groups of two. And the way we're going to do this is you're going to repeat. 
you're going to repeat this to um, to your partner by switch. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Guys, re repeat it five times to your partner. Switch, have your partner repeat theirs, and then switch back so that you each have repeated it ten times to each other. And compare the first time to the tenth time. I don't know what that is. Go next one. A fit and a fly flew up in the flume. He said, let us fly so they fly, let us flee. So they flew through a flaw in the middle of the flume. A flea and a fly flew up in the flume. He said, let us fly, let us fly, let us fly, let us flee. So they flew us a flaw in the flume. I'm trying to kill me over here. He gave you attention, though.
A good rule of thumb is to dress just at or just above the same level as your audience. The worst thing you can do is to dress in such a way that detracts from your, the message of your speech or makes you stick out for all the wrong reasons. So for instance, like dirty clothes or inappropriate language, you don't want to do that. So these are some examples of the things that you probably wear during your, uh, the day of your speech. The key is to look professional and respectful. Um, but once you start talking, they should, uh, your audience shouldn't be concerned with what you're wearing anyway. So, um, and another very important thing, how you dress affects your credibility, and credibility is really everything when it comes to public speaking. The next is body language. Uh, you want to have the proper body language as far as posture goes. Um, your stance, you want to stand confidently yet relaxed. Um, this plays into nonverbal communication. How you stand in front of the room speaks even before you do. Then hand gestures are very important. You want to begin neutral with the, your hands at your side. And any gestures that you make should be used sparingly. Um, but they should be defined, clean, and strong in order to amplify uh, points during your speech. You don't want to uh, make any gestures or move about uh, in a distracting manner. Facial expressions are also very important. The human face is vital to communication. Um, this goes from recognizing another person or understanding subtle cues that underlie the motive, people's motives. Uh, audience members depend on your facial expressions to augment meaning. So you don't want to do anything that's distracting. I noticed in my last speech, I have a habit of chewing on the inside of my cheek, and I was doing that during the speech, and I was like, oh my god. Does anyone else have something that they, they do that you're just like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Yeah, I touched my nose like 50 times. Touch your nose? nose like, yeah. Like, yeah. Or you're just like, oh my god. Like, wow, yeah, you just want to hide under a rock. But yeah, so everything that you do during a speech, people do notice, um, whether you know it or not. Uh, movement is also very important. You want to minimize movement um, and eliminate unnecessary movement. You don't want to rock um, or move about in a distracting manner, but you do want to utilize your space to move about uh, you can know, in, in front of other people. Want to hide back, back uh, behind the post, and that's not good. And eye contact, I would say, is the most important when I put an exclamation point because eye contact is very important. Um, when you fail to make eye contact with your audience, you look less authoritative and you look less credible, less believable, and less confident. Eye contact transforms your listeners from passive receivers to active participants, so it becomes more like a conversation. All right. So vocal behavior, uh, you want to use the, the appropriate tone, pitch, rate of speech, and pauses are also very important during your speech. You don't want to talk too fast, you don't want to talk too slow, you don't get bored, um, and pauses so people can reflect on what you're saying. Uh, you speak loudly and clearly so those in the back of the room can hear, uh, and confidently and with conviction because if you don't believe what you're saying, then why should your audience? Then we have the seven principles. If you flip in your booklet, actually you can fill them out as we go along if you like. Um, there's seven principles of public speaking. The first is perception. Stop trying to be a great public speaker. People want to listen to someone who's interesting, relaxed, and comfortable. When we give a speech, something really changes. Have you ever prepared for a speech and you're like, I got this, and then you get there and you're just like, it just didn't go as well as you planned. That's because something happens once you start talking where you're not as comfortable and as confident as you were when you were yourself. So uh, to become an effective speaker, you must focus on speaking and let go of the public. Think of it like a relaxed conversation between two people. It helps. The second is perfection. When you make a mistake, no one cares but you, and no one really notices but you. Even the most accomplished public speaker makes mistakes. The best thing you can do is to move on and don't let it distract you or your audience. Be real, not perfect. The third is visualization. If you can see it, you can speak it. Winners in all aspects of life have one thing in common. They practice visualization in order to achieve their goals. 
whether it's a salesperson trying to sell a car or an athlete who's visualizing making that basket or hitting that home run. The same is true for public speaking. The best way to get your mind in the right place is to deliver your speech and to visually visualize yourself doing so. The fourth is discipline. Practice makes perfect. Your goal is not to be a perfect public speaker, but your goal is to be an effective public speaker. Practice, 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 rehearse, rehearse, rehearse. The fifth is description. Whatever, or you want to make your uh, speech personal. Whatever the topic, audiences best respond when speakers personalize their communication. Tell stories, tell them about your experiences, insert a personal interest element, and it helps listeners warm up and it puts you at ease. The sixth is inspiration. You want to speak to serve your audience. Take the focus off yourself and shift it to your audience. The objective is to not, not to benefit the speaker, but to benefit the audience through teaching, motivation, and entertainment. How can you help your audience achieve their goal? And lastly, we have anticipation. Always leave your audience wanting more. When it comes to public speaking, less is more. You, uh, it's better to leave your listeners wishing that you had spoken just a few minutes longer than to have them all squirming in their seats waiting for you to finish. So then we have um, you came up with this, which I guess your overall delivery, you want to keep these in mind. If you're not doing these things, then you should have an alarm going off. And this, this is just a good way to, I guess, judge your audience, which is very important while you're speaking. Um, and it plays into a, a nonverbal and verbal communication. So if your audience is sitting there like with their eyes closed or just looking off in space or texting, clearly you want to you want to adjust and um, adapt to your, how your audience is acting because um, you don't want to talk at your audience. The, um, and these five things will um, help you read your audience effectively and to adapt to their um, cues that they're giving you, which is very important. So we're going to just do a delivery activity. Um, everyone is, if you put it to your book, <laughs> Is this our last page of the meeting? So what I'm going to have you guys do is to split the groups of four or five at your tables. Each of you are going to prepare a one-minute speech on any of the given topics. You can do hobbies, priorities, zero, happies. If you come up with your own, that's fine too. Um, then you're going to present these to your table while we walk around and provide you with a little feedback. Um, make it fun if you like, but just keep in mind the seven principles of, of, of effective public speaking. And um, also take a little bit of time to think about some visual aids that you might use during your speech.
keep calm and thank you for participating. And keep calm because Professor Newman is the most amazing. Yes. Professor. Aww. Aww.